It's time for Fresh Oil with singer-songwriter and pastor Keith Manley. A program designed to minister the gospel of God's grace and to bring fresh oil to the brokenhearted. And now, with today's program, Pastor Keith Manley. Hello, my friend. Welcome to another edition of Fresh Oil. I'm Keith Manley. I love teaching verse by verse, line upon line, precept upon precept, because God has the perfect outline already laid out in the scriptures for how he would like us to understand his word. One of my favorite books is a a treasure in the New Testament. It's only one chapter long. It's kind of hidden away. If you don't know about it, you might miss it. It's the book of Philemon. But it's a guy who was a friend of Paul's, an old acquaintance of the Apostle Paul, probably a convert under Paul's ministry. And Paul writes him this letter because Paul runs into a runaway slave. And as the runaway slave is telling Paul his story, the Apostle Paul realizes that his former master, was someone that Paul knew. And so Paul makes an appeal on the on behalf of this man whose name was Onesimus. And he writes to Philemon, and he says this, beginning in verse 4, I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers, because I hear about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. Now keep in mind, this was long before the days of social media. And somehow the word would get around, even to where Paul's at, of what's going on in Philemon's life. Paul says, I hear about you. you got great faith in the Lord Jesus, and you have this love for all the saints. And then he says in verse 6, I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith so that you will have a full understanding of every good thing we have in Christ. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brother, have refreshed the heart's of the saints. Now, if that sounds really good, it's because the Apostle Paul is setting him up. He, he's letting him know that, hey, brother, you're calling yourself a brother in Christ, and I know you've done these good things. I know you've made a commitment to Jesus. Now let's see what you're going to do with it. And he begins verse 8 with my favorite word, therefore. I've always taught you when you see the word therefore, stop and see what it's there for. So Paul puts it therefore. And he says, although in Christ I could be bold in order you to do what you ought to do, yet I appeal to you on the basis of love. I then, as Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus, I appeal to you for my son, Onesimus, who became my son while I was in chains. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he has become useful to you both to you and to me. What's so interesting about this story is apparently Paul meets this guy named Onesimus in jail because Paul says, I I met him while I was a prisoner, uh, while I was in chains. He became my son. I never cease to be amazed at the providence of God, how God causes things to align and causes us to be at just the right place at just the right time. And he had Paul be in the same prison where Onesimus was so he could meet him and be able to make an appeal for his freedom. There's so many points we could make just on these couple of verses that I've read so far. First of all, Paul says, I could order you to do this, but I'm going to appeal to you on the basis of love. See, Paul wanted Philemon to make the right decision and do it from his heart and not do it from the law. That's the way grace works. My friend, do you know that grace will pull more out of you than the law ever could? Grace will make you give more than you ever would give under the law. It will make you do good deeds more than you would ever do just trying to keep the law. So Paul said, I I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who became my son while I was in chains. And then he makes a play on his name. You see, Onesimus, this runaway slave, who was formerly a slave of Philemon's, Onesimus' name meant beneficial or useful. Isn't that something? His name was useful. And Paul is basically saying, here in verse 11, he says, Formerly, he was useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and to me. I love that, friend. He's saying grace takes you from being useless to becoming 
useful. This little book of Philemon is like a postcard. It's a, it, it's a snapshot where God gives us a, a, a picture of his grace in action. When Onesimus met Jesus, he went from being useless to being useful, like his name declared. I can't even begin to imagine the struggle Paul must have had when he put two and two together. He's hearing the story of this runaway slave, and Paul probably says, where did you come from? And he tells him, and then Paul says, who was your master? And he tells him it was a man named Philemon, and Paul goes, oh, that's why God sent you here. That man owes me, and Paul's about to ask him a big favor. Verse 12, he goes on and he says, I am sending him who is my very heart back to you. I would have liked to keep him with me so that he could take your place in helping me while I'm in chains for the gospel. Did you get that dig? Paul says, I'm sending him back. I don't want to. I I would like to keep him here because he's, he's helping me while I'm here in prison. Notice Paul said, I'm going to send him He's here with me, so he's taking your place and helping me while I'm in chains. See, Paul's saying, man, Philemon, you could be here at my side. You could be here ministering to me, but you're not. So what happens is your runaway slave winds up in the same prison, and now he's taking care of me. But I know he owes you, so I'm sending him back to you. You see, friend, apart from Christ, we all are useless. We all are scarred by the ugliness of sin. But one touch from the master's hand, and we go from being useless to becoming useful. Even though we're all created in God's image to serve him and to worship him, our worth has been marred by sin. But God restores us through salvation at the cross. My friend, today, if you're listening to this radio program and you've never received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I want you to know that the God of the universe loved you so much that he sent his son to come here and and to pay the price for every wrong thing you ever have done or ever will do. And he died on the cross for you to take you from being useless to being useful. Perhaps you have done some things in the past that you, you, you are so ashamed of and you so regret. I want you to know something, friend. God can turn it around for you. He, he sees you through the eyes of love and his grace, and he wants to adopt you into his family and take you from being useless to being useful. Onesimus, useful. He went from being a slave to being a member of, of the family. Look what it says in verse 14, but I did not want to do anything without your consent so that any favor you do will be spontaneous and not forced. See friend, that's what grace really does. Grace is is spontaneous from the heart and not forced. If we do what we do under law, we're only doing it because we have to do it. How would you like to be married just because you have to? See, friend, I'm married because I love my wife, and, and, and what I do, I do out of love. My, my appreciation for her comes out of love, not out of law. God wants that out of his relationship with you. He wants you to do it because you love him. He says, I didn't want to do anything without your consent so that any favor you do will be spontaneous and not forced. It had to be so hard for the Apostle Paul to send this runaway slave back to Onesimus. This is kind of strange even talking about this because slavery is so repulsive and it's it's prevalent even in our society today. And it was there in in the days of the Bible. But, But God still caused these people, both slaves and masters, to come to know him and they became members in the family of God and in the kingdom. And that's why he tells us now in in Christ, there's no difference in male nor female, Jew nor Greek, bond or free. We're all one in Christ Jesus. It had to be so shocking when when, when Philemon got this letter from the apostle Paul and and, and he comes back with, with 
Onesimus comes back with this letter from Paul, and I can't even imagine what it was like when Onesimus realized that this person who was useless for for him before, he, he ran away chasing his dream, maybe even robbed his owner, who knows, but now he's a member of the family. Can you imagine going from viewing him as a slave to now viewing him as a member of the family? That is amazing to me. You know, Paul wrote something in Romans that kind of relates to this story. It's Romans chapter 6, verse 16 through 18. He says, don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone to obey him as slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience that leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. See, Paul is now going to remind Philemon that he also was a slave, but he was a slave to sin. And now God has made him free through the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus touches our life and he brings freedom into our life. Now look with me at verse 15. Paul says to Philemon, he says, perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back for good, no longer as a slave, but better than a slave, as a dear brother. He is very dear to me, but even dearer to you, both as a man and as a brother in the Lord. Now Paul is looking for God's divine providence in this situation. He's wanting Philemon to see beyond the natural and see that God has a plan for our life. He orchestrates our steps and he causes them to come in alignment with his will. Now Paul gives the ask. It comes in verse 17. Here's the ask. So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has done you any wrong or owes you anything, charge it to me. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will pay it back, not to mention that you owe me your very self. I love the Apostle Paul. I can't wait to meet him in heaven. This guy was so amazing. Look how he, how he words this. If you consider me a partner, then welcome him. Boy, is that heavy. Paul's saying, hey, this guy is not just your slave. He, he's my brother. And then Paul says, if he's done you any wrong, charge it to me. He went from being in the red to being in the black. Now his debt will be paid in full because Paul's saying, whatever that debt is, I want you to charge it to me. I will pay it back. And then he puts this little dig in, not to mention you owe me your very self. You see, friend, that's what Jesus Christ did for us. He came to the cross and he died taking all of my sins and what I owed Father God. And Jesus charged it to himself. He took my sin and he put it on himself. The Bible says God made him who knew no sin to become sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I love that. In verse 21, Paul winds up, he says, confident of your obedience, I write to you knowing that you will do even more than I ask. See, friend, that's what grace does. Grace always does more than the law ever asks. And he says, and one thing more, prepare a guest room for me because I hope to be restored to you in answer to your prayers. Paul's giving him accountability. He's letting him know, I'm coming soon, and I want to hear that you did the right thing. Hey, I so enjoyed this story today of Onesimus, the runaway slave, and Philemon, his master. Thanks for joining us today for Fresh Oil with Pastor Keith Manley. Fresh Oil is an outreach of Grace Family Church in Rockford, Illinois, and can be heard each weekday at this same time. You can reach us online at we need God.com. Until next time, remember, 
God's love for you is unconditional, and He makes His mercies new every morning.